Hi everyone, welcome to the Skeins of Dreams knitting podcast. I'm Megha. I'm also known as Skeins of Dreams on Instagram and on Ravelry. And this is the corner of YouTube where I share my knitting, my making, and um, basically everything crafting with you. <laughs> thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you're new, thank you so much for checking out my video. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for sticking with me um, throughout my journey and uh, thank you so much for all the love and support you've been giving me. Uh, I think this is episode 12 and um, I'm, I have a lot to talk about today. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are so many things uh, happening at the same time and so many things I'm... Um, so I have a lot to talk about today. I have finished objects, works in progress, and I'm gonna talk about the blanket make along that has officially started. <laughs> and um, I do have a giveaway for all of you for being so supportive and um, for all the uh, beautiful comments that you leave on my videos. Uh, so I'll talk about the giveaway as we uh, go through the episode. So I won't make you wait too long and let's get started. <laughs> So, uh, my one of my finished objects is also what I'm wearing today. And you would have noticed I have finally finished my beautiful Foxberry sweater. Uh, this is a design by Sari Nordland. And I knit this in Knitting for Olive, Merino and Soft Silk Mohair held together. Uh, the color is Bordeaux. It's a beautiful wine color. Today is a really, really bright day in Buffalo. Uh, it's been very snowy here and um, I think the, I, I don't know how the, the, the lighting shows, uh, how it shows the sweater because the sweater is kind of a darker color. Um, it's, I found it really hard to photograph it but I was able to get some very pretty pictures. I do have a video of me just like uh, wearing the sweater and showing how it fits and I'm going to put that here. My favorite thing about this sweater is the sleeves. I'm, I have, I don't think I've ever done sleeves with like detail on it before. And this is one of my favorite, favorite things about this sweater. So you can see that the lace of the yoke is, is repeated on the sleeve. And then you cinch in the sleeve to do uh, the ribbing. The other thing I really liked uh, in this sweater was the twisted rib detail. I think the twisted rib detail um, gave it uh, a very nice finish. I, I really enjoyed doing that. So the actually the sweater was supposed to like, you know, you're supposed to do the twisted rib and then fold it over for like a crew neck collar. But when I made the, when I was making it and I was trying it on, I kind of liked this funnel neck collar on me. I thought it looked really nice. So I didn't fold the collar in and I just left it like that and I, I do think it looks really pretty uh, the way it is. So that's one of the biggest changes I made. <laughs> um, and uh, what else? So I, uh, I test knit this pattern. So I was supposed to finish the yoke and a sleeve by I think January 10th or something. And I think I got through the yoke but only half the sleeve. I had if you've been following along on my videos, I always bombard myself with so many projects and then I struggle to finish them. <laughs> so this year, one of the things I want to do is to not sign up for as many test knits and not work with such hard deadlines. Uh, I just want to make peacefully and um, not stress myself out about uh, meeting deadlines. That being said, I'm sure I will end up signing like signing up for at least one test knit and that's okay but I just don't want to do so many that I can't I can't keep up with them <laughs> last year I did a lot of test knits I, I um, if you watched my 2021 sweater recap a lot of those sweaters were test knits so this year um, not so many test knits <laughs> but yeah uh, so 
again I went on a tangent um, I was talking about the Foxberry the pattern is beautiful Sari Nordland's patterns are amazing I don't know how she comes up with so many beautiful designs so quickly one after the other there's always something she's making or she's um, releasing soon that you know everybody wants to make it so this is one of the I think this is a very very pretty design and she the original sample she knit is in a beautiful like foxy orange um, color and I I'm like I really like that color usually but I I would have picked that had I needed to purchase yarn or something but um, I had this uh, knitting for olive bordeaux merino already in stash and I just had to buy the matching mohair to uh, make the sweater so I was really happy that I, w I got to use some stash yarn as well and I finished it <laughs> though it's funny like I I'm saying I use up stash yarn but then I'm buying mohair to go with it um, it's a it's a vicious cycle <laughs> but yeah, anyway uh, that being said my sweater is done I'm so happy it fits me really well and this is one of those sweaters like I wear it and I feel like okay I'm like all dressed up to go out and everything so I'm, I'm super pleased with how it it looks and I really love um, the fabric um, the mohair creates it's very warm but I, I know a lot of people um, said that mohair is like a bit too warm so before I started knitting with mohair I was a little worried about that because I can I run a little hot and cold I mean it's very it's very weird like I never know how I'm going to react to um, like just temperatures and everything but I, I'm very comfortable in mohair I think I, I don't think it's too warm like I I wear it in my office I like I'm sitting at home wearing this and like the heaters going in my house but I'm I'm extremely comfortable so I don't think it's too warm and I love the drapey fabric it creates and it's so soft um, and so fuzzy I really like um, this sweater a lot I'm I'm super happy with this make let's see have I addressed everything okay so one of the things I noticed with the, um, I made two sweaters, including this. This is my second sweater in this combination. Knitting for olive merino and knitting for olive soft silk mohair. Now, I have only ever knit with um, mohair from knitting for olive. I have not tried any other mohair um, like companies or brands yet. So one of the things that stood out with both these makes that I both these sweaters that I made was that it was a little hard on my hands now I'm not sure that's the yarn I don't know if it's the yarn combination with the metal needles that I use or is it the gauge but I had a lot of trouble finishing the sweater I was I had finished the sweater the body finished the sleeve I was on the second sleeve and I couldn't, I really couldn't knit for five rounds or more on the sleeve without my forearm starting to hurt. Now, I don't know what is contribute, what contributed to it, whether it was the yarn, whether it's the combination of the yarn with the needles, was it too slick? Maybe I should have used wooden needles with the mohair um, or whether it was the fact that I've been knitting like a um, crazy person. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it was but I've always been knitting like I'm currently knitting like I'm always knitting a lot so and I don't really have an issue with um, my hands hurting as much as they did when I was trying to finish this sweater so I'm I'm gonna experiment a little the next sweater I make with mohair I'm gonna try uh, wooden needles to see if that helps um, yeah, I really can't tell. And I remember when I I made a cardigan last year, which I showed in the 2021 sweater roundup, um, that was also a mohair cardigan. And that one I remember I had trouble finishing as well. I don't remember my hands hurting as much, but they definitely um, were stressed out and I had a lot of trouble finishing that sweater. So 
um i'm very happy with the finished product so i'm not going to uh feel bad about it <laughs> but i do want to investigate further why what happened and what exactly am i experiencing and what is contributing to it because i don't want to injure myself uh i don't want to be in a situation where i can't knit that's kind of uh scary to me <laughs> so we'll see anyway but my sweater is beautiful i'm very happy and um i haven't worn it out yet i've just worn it the one day when i took pictures i think that was last saturday and then i'm wearing it today um for the podcast of course <laughs> i have to uh, wear it out but i i mean i haven't worn it to work mostly because i feel like it's a very dressy sweater and i feel like okay if i wear this um will it look weird because i'm i, I might look too dressed up but i think that i'm just overthinking it and i should just wear it it's beautiful <laughs> yeah so that's my finished foxberry um and i'm super happy with it okay i already need a water break and here is my massive knitting mug that i made in my pottery class So if you've seen my previous videos I already have a mug with this knitting texture on it and then I liked it so much I wanted another one so this time around I made this mug really really big so that's my head for reference <laughs> uh currently I don't have any coffee or tea or anything in it it's just water I already had my first coffee of the day so I decided I think water should be sufficient. I am actually taking a break from my pottery classes. Um so I have a bunch of things that I finished, but I'm not going to go to the class for the next 6 weeks. Uh I just need a break. It the class was every week for 3 hours in the evenings like 6 to 9. and after a whole day of work and then 6 o'clock the pottery class i mean while i was in the class i never felt like it was a chore i loved being there but i just think i need a break <laughs> there is a lot going on and i i really um i need a break that's it so um this was one of the last things i finished and i'm so happy and i made a huge um handle on this um I have been told that such a big handle sometimes it it's very prone to breaking. Um I usually hold my mugs like I hold the mug and I don't hold them by the handle and I really like the handles through which I can put my like entire hand in. So I'm hoping that they don't break but we'll see. Um <laughs> uh. and uh, there's oreo he's come to say hi this is his favorite spot to sit especially if it's nice and bright outside or it's sunny or we open this um huge french window so okay i think he has decided to settle in and uh, be um um guest on the podcast <laughs> i don't think he cares much about the knitting but i do think i i think he likes laying on it and that's one of his favorite things to do okay so um i have another finished object and while i'm very happy i finished this particular object a project i kind of messed up so if you watched my previous episode uh i was making this beautiful uh worsted weight shawl for myself um that i kind of came up i mean i just followed a simple crescent shawl recipe and uh i just made it up as i went i had three lovely skeins of yarn from polar bear yarn alexandria who is the dyer um she had this beautiful blush pink yarn that i purchased because of the color like i really really liked the color it was a very warm um peachy pink and i was talking about the recipe of the shawl and by the way the shawl recipe is available on my ravelry notes and if you can't access ravelry please feel free to reach out to me and i will send you the recipe of the shawl but uh i just made it up as i went 
and I finished the shawl and I was blocking it and I messed up. So I'll tell you what I did, but here's the shawl. And it's a very long, beautiful shawl. So basically all I did was have these garter ridges and then do an eyelet row after every 15 garter ridges and made up like a crescent shawl. So it's, if I try to wear it, I don't think it's like wide enough to go over my shoulders. And I mean, I'm, I think it'll sit like this, but mm, I like my shawls to be wider when they have to go over my shoulders like that. But I think it'll make a very nice scarf just to wear under my coat. And uh, I do like the size of this. This used up three full skeins of worsted weight. I had three skeins and three skeins are not enough for me to make a garment. And as you know, I'm a serious garment knitter. <laughs> but I had this idea I wanted to use up all these three skeins to make a beautiful shawl and I and I did that. Now, if you are looking at it, I don't know if you can tell the splotches of color that are on it. This is the color of the yarn when I started and this is how much is left by the way so that's all I have to show you and so this is the color I started with and this is how the shawl is right now. So as you can see I bought this pretty pretty yarn for its color and I messed up when I was blocking it. So uh, I finished it two days ago. I soaked it in a, like a huge tub of water and it was soaking there. And then as an afterthought, like I was just going, doing my own thing after once I soaked it. And then as an afterthought, I was like, oh, I have all these socks and this other sweater that have been waiting to be reblocked. So why don't I just throw this in the same bath of water? So without thinking, I just dumped all my other so like four or five pairs of socks and this other sweater that I wear at home all the time. It's like my sweatshirty sweater. I threw everything in into that bath without thinking. And I didn't even realize, you know, I didn't think twice about because these things were all used. They've been washed before. So the thought never occurred to me that something could bleed and ruin the color of my shawl and then i like blocked everything like i hung this to dry i don't usually block the shawls like pin block them but i like l keep them wet and let them hang by their weight so they can stretch out as much as possible and i did that with the shawl and once it dried I took a look at it and I'm like, oh, this looks weird. And then I realized that I had ruined the color with darker splotches of color on it. Now, I mean, if I showed it to someone who didn't know what the original color looked like, they would be like, it looks fine. But I can tell. And I know Alexandria can tell. I'm so sorry, Alexander. I'm so sorry. I messed up the the pretty color of your yarn. I feel so terrible. Um, I'm seriously... So once I realized I ruined it, I actually washed it again to try and see if I could get the um, loose dye out. I put a color catcher in that bath. I rinsed it twice and then I dried it again. But I don't think... It's going back to its original. It's still pretty, but it's not as pretty as it was originally. And I really, really bought it for this beautiful color. And now it's like a, it's almost like a darker, um, I don't know, it's not peachy pink anymore. And I'm upset about that. But I think what I'm going to do is actually over dye it. Um, because if I keep staring at it like this, I don't think I'll want to use it. I, I will be reminded of this silly, silly thing I did and um, feel really bad about it. 
So I have a finished object, but I messed it up. Uh, I'm still happy with the with the simple shawl that I came up with. I think this will make a really nice gift shawl for someone. Like, um, I I mean, you knitting fingering weight shawls for people. I it it takes a long time. That's a lot of effort. <laughs> so if someone usually asks me for a scarf, I try to look for um, a simple worsted weight pattern that I can follow and I think this is perfect like I really enjoyed knitting it it was very mindless um, but still of a little interest because you have to have you have to do these 15 ridges of garter before you can do the eyelet so you kind of like look forward to the um, eyelet rows and then um, it got done really quickly so I'm, I'm very pleased with um, the, the recipe and as I mentioned it's on my Ravelry notes so you can use it let me know if there are questions the only thing was at the end because it's not really a pattern I didn't know how far I'd be able to go before I had to bind off so this last section has only 13 ridges of garter it does not have 15 so I was weighing my yarn as I went uh, to make sure that I had enough for a bind off and usually towards the end I feel like if say you need four grams to finish one of the last rows I try to leave at least four times as much to bind off and I used Jenny's super stretchy bind off and I, I did it on an eyelet row so the bind off is like it's done on a row which has an eyelet um, I do really like the effect of that it looks really pretty um, I think I'm definitely going to make this again, um, but I'm unhappy I ruined this particular one. <laughs> but yeah, so that was another finished object and I'm again so sorry Alexandria, I really, I really feel so terrible about what I did. Um, but it's one of those things that I feel like you have to do it once to kind of learn the lesson. And then you don't do it again <laughs> so I learned my lesson for sure <laughs> yep so that was my finished object number two and now the whips <laughs> so um, last episode if you watched my previous episode I was talking about casting on for the saga cardigan so um, Saga Cardigan is this beautiful colorwork cardigan by Yarbo. Um, it's a it's by a designer. I'm sorry, I'm gonna put their name on the screen, but it was for Yarbo, um, a Swedish. I think it's a Swedish um, company, um, yarn company, and they also have a lot of patterns. Um, but when I was I wanted to cast it on in this beautiful Rama yarn that I have, Rama Phenol. I don't even know if it's called Phenol anymore, but it's one of my... So it was funny, there some... I think I was having this discussion with a group of friends and they were talking about their desert island yarns. <laughs> so Rama is definitely one of my desert island yarns, or at least it is my own, like if... If I had a pick of one yarn line that I could um, knit for for the rest of my life, this would definitely be it. So I wanted to measure gauge um, of a previous project that I was working on with Rama. So I pulled out the previous project with the intention of measuring the gauge and then using the appropriate needle size for the Saga cardigan. And the project I pulled out was my beautiful Birkin and when I pulled this particular one out and I was like dude you should really be finishing this <laughs> instead of casting on a new project in the same yarn with the same gauge <laughs> why don't you just finish this one and one of the intentions that I mentioned this for this year are is to finish um, some of my unfinished objects and I did a whole um, episode on that so I did the right thing and I put my beautiful Birkin back on my needles so this is the Birkin 
sweater by Caitlin Hunter, who is known as Boylan Networks. And I had finished just the, I had finished the yoke, separated for sleeves, and then I just like let it go because I had other um, test nets due. But now it's back on my needles and this is how much I have done. So I had finished the yoke and separated for sleeves. That was just before this last color work pattern. And I did the color work and I picked up the sleeve. And I mean, I picked up the sleeve here, did the color work on the sleeve and then knit. I'm knitting the sleeve. Um, I wanted to, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm kind of deviating from the original design. And I want to do sort of almost sleeves like this, like balloon sleeves with like singed at the cuff. And then I want to use the rest of the yarn to make the body almost a tunic style uh, sweater. And I'm, I really think that it will be a very pretty uh, finished result if I'm able to pull it off. Uh, because of the, um, you know, it's all floral and then it will be a very feminine um tunic style sweater and I have a lot of this uh, rust rama uh, actually so I have enough I think that I can if I want to use it use almost all of it up I can make a longer length sweater and I can have sleeves which are uh, balloon sleeves because since they go straight out almost it will use up a lot of yarn so I've put this one back on my needles and I actually put this back on my needles right after I finished this and I was like I was talking about how much my hands were hurting knitting this and when I put this back on my uh, when I started knitting this again I realized how much I love knitting with the Ramayan it was it was like uh, meeting an old friend again it was <laughs> it was really nice I know I'm being a little dramatic but I really enjoy knitting knitting with um, the woolly wools and um, I especially uh, like Ramayan and now that I'm talking about it I just just you know a few stitches <laughs> I watched um, one of my new uh, podcasts that I like one of the podcasts that I've recently started watching and I don't know why YouTube took this long to show Yana's podcast is Finnish Knitting Stories and Yana is a beautiful beautiful knitter um, she's also she also has a she also dyes yarn and she knits and her color palette is amazing like it's just it's everything I dream of <laughs> it's so pretty she does use lighter uh, colors um, a lot of neutrals a lot of pinks and I really like um, her knitting style, her knitting patterns, and in her podcast, she's usually talking while she knits. Like she's constantly, she has something in her hands, and she's like knitting, and she's talking, and it feels like it feels so nice to watch that. And I don't know if I can do that like dedicatedly. Um, I might forget what I'm talking about or go on tangents. So. I don't know if I want to start doing that, uh, but yeah, but Yana's, um, I'm sure you all already know of Yana, but I really like that she knits and then she does the podcast. So even while talking about knitting, she is knitting. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop, though it's very hard to, I'm just going to pull this. Uh, okay. If I keep doing that, this is what will happen. I'll go on random tangents because I'll forget what I was going to speak about. <laughs> so that was one of my works in progress that I'm actively working on. And then uh, I have a brand new project that you haven't seen before because it was cast on just last week. And I've made a lot of progress on it. It's something I've been knitting almost monogamously. I mean, not monogamous because I am knitting on the Birkin as well. Monogamous for me is like two or three projects, I think. <laughs> Which defies the definition of mon... Of whatever. Or defies the definition of being monogamous. Um, okay. So, a couple episodes ago, I was talking about 
doing a color work sweater for Mr. Schemes of Dreams because he saw my blizzard sweater and he was really impressed by it and he um, kind of hinted a couple of times that he wanted a color work sweater. So I had uh, picked out a pattern from a book that I have which is on uh, which is the Strands of Joy by um, Anna Johanna. I think it's it's sitting right there on my table there. Um, I had picked out the foliage sweater and Baljeet liked that sweater a lot and I had I decided I'd do it but that sweater is a fingering weight sweater and I wanted to use DK yarn. I didn't really feel like making a fingering weight sweater for um, right after like finishing this. I, I wanted something quick um, so I didn't want to do it in fingering weight. I wanted to do it in DK but um, I, I, I didn't get gauge obviously because it's DK yarn and I tried to adjust the sizing by knitting a smaller size in the DK gauge but it just wasn't working out and one of um, Baljeet's pet peeves is he likes the collar to be very close to his neck like he doesn't like wider neck which I guess uh, I can understand because just how men's clothing um, is designed the wider necks don't always look really good so um, he really didn't want a sweater that you know even had a remote possibility of being a little wide he likes them right up against his neck like when you pull pull them on you know the sweater that kind of like bunch your hair down he wants that <laughs> so uh, the foliage sweater wasn't working out because I was like um, I was doing a different gauge and everything so I wasn't feeling it I didn't want to make him another sweater which was wider neck and then he would not wear it uh, because he's very finicky <laughs> so then I decided okay uh, what yarn do I have that I really want to use and that I can measure my own gauge and then make make up my own sweater basically so I have the strange brew book by tin can knits it's a beautiful book with a lot of wonderful sweater designs but but most importantly it has a sweater recipe where you can use your own gauge for whatever yarn you're using and then kind of design your own sweater you can uh, design your own color work charts they have a lot of color work charts given in the book that they have given in the book already which you can mix and match make up your own yoke and i think i am pretty late to the party because the book was released a few years ago i don't remember when and a lot of people have knit from it already and um, I decided that I have the book, I have the motivation, <laughs> Baljeet wants a color work sweater, and this is it. So I took out some beautiful um, Brooklyn Tweed um, shelter yarn that I have in this lovely Yellowstone color. This is called Yellowstone. It's a very, it's a very earthy mossy green it's blowing out completely right now very very mossy green and uh, i know the last sweater i made baljeet was also green but it was a very different green it was a very luscious um luscious green <laughs> but this one is little it's it has some brown undertones it has some specks of orange and some specks of light yellow on it it's it's a very very beautiful color um, so I wanted to use this yarn up and uh, I had this in stash so I decided to swatch with it and then with my swatch um, just like measured my gauge and then looked at the strange brew book and I spent a day like I first looked at the strange brew book and figured out what my stitch counts would be for the neck what my stitch count would be for the yoke and then how many rows I have to increase between the neck and the yoke, uh, like the final body and sleeve separation, and what how many rows there are, and where I have to put the increases. And the Strange Brew book walks you through all of this. So it walks you through this entire process. 
and then <laughs> I came up with a color work chart which has resulted in this sweater. Uh, it is just some um, pine trees I guess and some snowflakes and I put this um, zigzag motif to kind of remind us of the mountains and Baljeet and I have taken a lot of trips to go um, uh, to like see different mountains in the US. We went to uh, the Rocky Mountain National Park, we went to the Adirondacks which is here um, uh, eastern New York, uh, northeastern New York and then we went um, recently like last November we went to the Smoky Mountains so we really, really enjoy taking vacations to um, to see different mountains and I thought this was a very very apt um, kind of a color work chart to make for him um, it's it's a it's kind of an ode to all our trips to the mountains and then the beautiful trees and then snowflakes of course so uh, I used this um, shelter yarn and I held it and the, col the contrast color is actually loft which is the fingering line of Brooklyn tweed um, but loft held together so held uh, double so loft held double gives you the same gauge as shelter which is a worsted weight and loft is a fingering weight uh, so so yeah that is the sweater I'm working on so this just doesn't really have a name, it's the Strange Brew book. Um, I am going to give it a nice quirky name. <laughs> so the way I worked on this is I cast on just below the collar um, with the given stitches in the book. And I knew that the, the book actually makes you cast on the stitches for the neck, do the collar and then start the color work. But I already knew that he needs the neck to be a little tighter so I cast on this this gig the stitch number of stitches that the book tells you but just below the collar the same number of stitches and then I did the color work after I did the color work I picked up stitches um, I picked up stitches and you can see this is the pickup line and then I worked two short rows or like two sets of short rows at the neck and then I did the ribbing and even in the ribbing I've actually reduced stitches to make the neck much tighter than the where I picked up so I've reduced stitches here um, I really don't remember how many stitches I reduced but I kept trying it on him and seeing okay where does this collar need to be uh, and that's one of the benefits of having the person or if you're making it for yourself you can keep trying it on and seeing what looks nice and so this is how the collar is now and it fits him really well and he's very happy and this is a fitted sweater on him it's not doesn't have too much ease um, oh the other thing I forgot to mention was the strange brew has I think three weights of yarn or three gauges they have given one for worsted one for fingering and one for sport or DK or something and the worsted gauge is 18 stitches and 4 inches but here I think I only have like 16 and a half or 17 stitches so it's a bigger loser gauge than what's given in the book so I actually had to size down so I had to do a bunch of math basically to come up with this sweater but it fits him really well so I'm doing everything right <laughs> so I was saying I did two sets of short rows here to raise the neck and then once I finished the sweater, I also did two sets of short rows on the back. So I did, so I split the short rows between the neck and also right after the yoke. And I think that gave a really nice uh, effect and then raised the back without having an obvious location where you can see all the short rows because sometimes your um, color work chart starts way down on your back because you have so many short rows happening right up against your neck so I didn't want that so you can almost not even tell that there are short rows here and I kind of like that effect so I did two sets here two sets after the yoke and then I split for the sleeves and I'm knitting the body now um, 
I'm already like 10 inches on the body and for Baljeet sweaters I need like 14 total so I have 2 inches of stockinette left and then 2 inches of ribbon and then I'll do the sleeves so the sweater is working up really fast because it's a loser gauge it's worsted weight yarn but I'm enjoying it a lot and not only did I come up with the, the sweater and do all of that work oh by the way okay I'll tell you what happened when I cast it on I had ideas of casting on this sweater with four colors like I wanted to have different colors kind of blending into each other and I cast the sweater on almost four times I would cast on knit the color work not feel too happy with the combination of color or my gauge was off or the yarns that I was picking were not going well with each other it was like nightmarish last week I think three days I spent on just casting on this sweater and then finally I decided you know what the four colors is not working out I'm not liking the color combinations so I'm just going to stick to two colors and when I put the fossil and the yellowstone colors together it just it just made sense and it looked so pretty that I realized I didn't need another color in it and so not only was this sweater like this whole thing that like designing the color work chart making sure the color work chart works with the increases and then knitting it and figuring out the colors but there were a lot of places in the color work where you have to go long distances between the next like the, the repeats are longer so you have to catch your floats now I always have issues when I'm catching my floats I really hate the fact that when you catch your floats it peeks out from the front and then you can see that you've caught your floats so I decided to try out the ladder back jacquard technique and um, I had heard about the technique I think on the Heather and Hops podcast because um, Kat made this the twigs sweater by uh, Junko Oromoto, o Okomoto is that right sorry I'll put it on the screen so Kat made the twigs sweater and she used the ladder back jacquard technique and I had heard of the technique before from other people and I decided you know what um, everyone's talking about it I'm going to try it so this is this is how my sweater looks on the wrong side I have used the ladder back jacquard which makes you kind of create a stitch uh, out of nowhere and then knit that stitch so you're pretty much knitting a second layer of fabric on the back and you can't even tell that you've got your floats and it looks pretty neat um, this is not blocked yet so I think some of the okay, some of the floats are kind of longer than others but I'm expecting when I block it it will be I would rather have my floats be a little too loose than to be tight so anyway, I used the ladder back jacquard technique and I don't understand why people don't talk about it more actually. Like it is such an underrated technique. It is so easy. I had looked at a video on YouTube, but I got confused looking at the video. So I just Googled the, the ladder back jacquard and the first thing that popped up was I think you sold us blog where she actually, they have written it like in words with small pictures inserted on what you're supposed to do I just read that like I was lying in bed reading that blog post and I read it and I was like it just hit me I was like oh this is how you do it and it was so simple and so I'm very pleased with how my floats are in the back you can not see where I've caught the floats there is some bubbling but I'm expecting this to go out in the blocking but I'm so pleased with this technique and I think I'm gonna use this um, I mean predominantly from now on every time I do color work and I need to catch floats which are like really long floats 
I, if I, if you remember, I mean, if you've been <laughs> watching all my videos, I was talking about this test knit I did last year where I kind of had to give up the test knit because I was really unhappy with my color work tension. So last year I pretty much gave up on color work, didn't do it much. And so this year you're seeing an excess of color work. <laughs> but um, one of the reasons I gave up that test knit was because when I was catching my floats, it was peeking from the front and I really didn't like that. So I was very unhappy with my tension. But if I had known of this particular technique back then, I think it would not have been so bad and I would have been able to finish it. So one of my new goals this year to actually is to knit that sweater again and because now I know this technique and it's so simple not even kidding it's very simple um I'm I'm gonna try that sweater again and make it again I still have the yarn I ripped it all out I still have the yarn so I can actually make that sweater uh, but I think this time I'm gonna make it for Baljeet instead of making it for myself just because that yarn is blue and I really don't feel like making a blue sweater for me. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, uh, long story, but this is the sweater for Baljeet and it's coming along beautifully. And I've been knitting on it very diligently. So that's why I've gotten so far and I do want to finish it as soon as possible because I think we have just one month of winter. Or, I mean, I'm saying a month, but like, severe winter maybe another month and then it will start warming up a bit and though busy feels cold all the time so i'm sure he'll wear the worsted weight sweater no problem and and the shelter is a woolen spun yarn so even though it's worsted weight it feels very light to wear it does not feel like you're suffocating it's so warm or something i have a shelter sweater um, which is very beautiful. I really enjoy wearing that. So I'm pretty sure he will get somewhere out of it this year. I mean this season and then he can wear it the next year, next season. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how long I've spoken about this particular one, but that's everything I wanted to talk about that. <laughs> so, uh, the next thing um, on my list of things to talk about is the blanket make along. But before that, I have another thing I want to uh, address and just hold on. So, if you watch my videos before, this sweater has come up multiple times on it. In December, I made this zipper cardigan. Um, jacket for Baljeet and this is the zipper sweater man by Petit Knit and I also posted a picture and I'll actually put a picture of him wearing it over here and I know this keeps making an appearance but the story of the sweater is not done <laughs> this sweater will be like my Everest or something it's such a simple sweater but I just keep having issues with it now I finished the sweater I put it on Baljeet and even when I was making the sweater from the beginning, um, I was trying it on him, asking him, does this fit okay? Do you like it? And he kept saying, yes, yes, it's very beautiful. I love it. And he just kept saying, yes, he likes it. And then when I finished it and we took pictures, he's like, uh, the neck's a little wide. I'm not sure I like how wide it is. And I'm like, okay, I had been asking you from the beginning because it's a top-down sweater. The neck was done first, but you never mentioned it. And now you're telling me the neck is too wide. <laughs> I finished the sweater. I struggled to put the zip in, but now it's the neck is too wide. Okay. So one of the things I did was actually take an elastic thread and crochet it on the inside of the neck here to kind of cinch in the neck and you can see it when he wears it but it has cinched in the neck a little but I don't think it has cinched in the neck the neck as much as he um, would like so um, what I'm seriously considering is actually taking out my zipper from here um, picking up a row of stitches with a needle 
and then cutting the neck and then once I cut the collar I mean cut the collar and I'll do some decreases and then bring the neck in so the the, the sweater is a top down but what I'll if I pick up and knit up it'll like I think bind off is a little tighter than casting on anyway I think I may be able to fix it it's a woolly wool this is piece fleece worsted I shouldn't have any issues cutting it and re-knitting the, the collar the only thing I'm considering is this collar is kind of folded over so I'm like do I do that if I if I add a few rows and then bring it in and then knit the fold over collar will that increase the length enough that I have to change the zipper because I need a longer zipper so there are few things to consider but I think it's worth it I think if he's not wearing it right now anyways because of whatever reason I think I need to fix it so this is one of the things I have to do um, to make the sweater more wearable for him um, yeah so that is a huge other project I feel to cut the yarn to knit it again but I think I'm gonna do it uh, I wanted to talk about it to see if anyone has any other um, ideas but I think I'm pretty set on this I'm just gonna take out the zipper in this portion. I won't like un, un like remove the zipper completely. I'm just gonna take it out from the collar and then redo the collar and see if that makes a difference. And then if I feel like the length of the sweater has increased because of this new collar that I'm knitting and my zipper is not long enough, then I'll unzip the whole, I like, uh, uh, remove the stitching and actually put a longer zipper otherwise what I can do is leave the zipper as long as it is and actually have a flap with a button enclosure on top so that the zipper can start a little below the top of the collar and I can actually have a button here to close the collar in front maybe that's not a bad idea Anyway, watch this space for more mending activity on this sweater, which refuses to finish. <laughs> Alright, now I think we can move along and talk about the blanket make-along. So, I'm officially starting the year-long blanket make-along. I have been thinking of making knitted blankets for like throws blankets whatever for myself for a really long time and all of last year i was very focused on creating a hand knit wardrobe for myself and i think at this point i have a lot of sweaters that i rotate quite a bit and i have enough that i can go for two weeks wear a new sweater every day and not have to repeat any <laughs> so i have a lot of sweaters so now my um impatience to make more sweaters is kind of calming down and I'm actually putting a lot more thought into what I'm making. So I decided I wanted some knitted blankets around the house and uh, I wanted throws, large shawls, just stuff to wrap myself in and I really like that. Um, I want big large shawls and um, big blankets and I really like having throws on the couch I have I make some quilts which I use like that so I decided this entire um, blanket mojo I need to channel it into something <laughs> so um, I'm going to host a blanket make-along now I'm calling it a make-along because you can crochet you can knit you can quilt However, you end up with a blanket, I'm cool with that. Um, I have some hashtags that I've thought of which you, we can use on Instagram. So trying to be quirky about the Schemes of Dreams podcast, the blanket make-along will be blankets of dreams make-along. <laughs> so the hashtag will be hashtag blankets of dreams M-A-L uh, for make-along. 
and um, if you have finished objects it will be hashtag blankets of dreams m a l f o so that's the finished object thread um, you can have vips you can do large shawls i'm not going to be super strict about what um, is a large shawl to me a large shawl is something that uses at least 1200 yards of fingering weight so like three skeins of fingering weight yarn or more but if you go into dk i'm sure it will be more than that i don't want to specify i don't want to be too strict about it it's a fun thing we're doing um, you can bring out your old whips uh, if you have um, blankets that have been uh, works in progress for years and you can bring them out and start working on them uh, and here I would like to mention Selma, my dear, dear friend Selma. <laughs> I feel so happy calling her my friend as well. So Selma of the Little Big Nets podcast uh, mentioned uh, me on her, gave me a shout out because she brought out one of her old crochet, beautiful crochet blanket that uh, she was uh, making out of scrap yarn. And I think minis and scraps. And she brought that out. Um, hoping that she gets her mojo back this year because I'm hosting the blanket make along and she mentioned me and she sent so many of you my way uh, my subscriber count has suddenly jumped <laughs> thank you so much Selma I really appreciate uh, the shout out it was so lovely of you to mention me and the make along and uh, thank you so much to all of you who came here um, watching Selma's podcast. I've been watching Selma's podcast for the, like it was the first podcast that I kind of got hooked to and I learned so much from uh, watching her. I'm not gonna gush more about Selma. I've already gushed enough in front of her. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you so much. I wanted to mention that and um, so yeah, so a lot of people, and I know my friend Anina of the Annie Odin Nets podcast, she is also making, I think it's called the North Easterly uh, Blanket. It's like a scrap blanket. It's very popular. So I was also thinking that in uh, dedication, in, in kind of like, um, in the spirit of the blanket make along, I will put together a list of patterns that people are knitting on and working on and maybe kind of go through them in one of the episodes. I haven't decided too much about it. Um, I have two or three patterns, at least four patterns in my mind that I want to make. I'm not saying I'm going to finish them in a year. You don't have to finish anything. I will have prices along the way. I'm planning to do milestones like um, every three months or something like that. And then I do want to have a grand prize at the end. Uh, one of the things grand prize at the end will definitely be a sweater quantity of yarn from my stash. <laughs> I, think, I think that will be an excellent way of de-stashing uh, and also um, sharing my stash with everyone and... Um, it will make a very nice price, I think. That's in my mind right now. It might change as the year goes by. A year is a long time. I don't want to plan everything. But I've already um, had two um, beautiful people reach out to me. Uh, one is Selena, who is the dyer behind Through the Wardrobe Yarn Company. Uh, Selena... Um, has recently started a new podcast um i think it's called the through the wardrobe through the wardrobe podcast i think so i'm gonna put that on screen here but selena has kindly offered to sponsor one of the gifts or the prizes for the make along and i've also been i've all uh, one of my friends on instagram has also reached out and um she would like to donate a pattern i'm gonna figure out the logistics as we um get going so I will let you know more about it. And if you are a yarn dyer or a designer, and if you would like to sponsor one of the prizes, um, please feel free to reach out. It would be lovely to um, hear from you. And, um, and I'm obviously going to have prizes that I'm sponsoring. So it'll be fun. 
basically we are here to have fun <laughs> so in the spirit of the blanket make along i cast on my half and half wrap uh, which is a design by Pearl Soho. It's very, very popular. Everybody is making it. Everybody, I think last year, everyone was on a half and half wrap craze. And while that was happening, Pearl Soho had a discount on their linen quill yarn. And I decided that I needed some. And so I, I showed you the colors I'm making this blanket in. So this will be my uh, color combination. This is red poppy and I'm so sorry the light is blowing it out completely but this is red poppy and this is purple smoke. So this is what my half and half wrap is going to um, be made out of. I cast on, it's, it's gonna take me a while but I cast on and I'm doing the short rows and I'm really enjoying it. This linen quill yarn is like butter. It's so soft, it's so pretty, and this color makes me so happy. It's such a nice, um, just a casual, you know, I'm just knitting, 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 it's a garter, so you don't have to do anything other than knit. So I'm really enjoying this um, beautiful um, cast on. I'm not knitting on it like, dedicatedly because i have a lot of other things going so it's going on in the background i'm not sure when i'll finish it um i have a few things i would like to finish before this becomes one of the main things i'm working on but i did cast on so the knit along has officially started <laughs> the make along sorry i need to keep reminding myself it's a make along yep so that is one of my first makes for the blanket make along and then uh, I have a crochet project. So usually, I mean, in the last few years, I, I always do this. I always try to have a crochet project on the go along with my knitting because the crochet project is very easy and, you know, it's, um, it's much quicker. And I'm not a very um, advanced crocheter. Like, I don't do complicated designs. I do very simple crochet stitches. And I usually use crochet for blankets only because knitting blankets takes a long time but crochet blankets can be done quickly so I use crochet blankets for baby blankets if I'm gifting it to someone um, stuff like that and so last year I made the beautiful bears rainbow blanket which I've spoken about before you've seen the pictures it's the colorful blanket that I gifted to my dearest friend and her baby so I am uh, experiencing a crochet void right now <laughs> so I'm talking a lot today I feel like um, but that's what you're here for so in a in a de-stash someone had given me a lot of very very rustic wool um, that they weren't going to use anymore so this is a company i think it's a canadian company called philosophers wool and the person whose de-stash it was had a lot of beautiful colors of this wool in their stash which was meant for a color work jacket like philosophers wool i think they sell kits uh, I don't know if they're still active. I don't know what the situation is, but they sell kits and also patterns which go with the kits, obviously. And um, this person destashed all of these beautiful colors and they just sent me, um, this friend of mine just sent me all of these, um, all of this yarn. So it's enough to make a big jacket in color work but this is almost iron weight yarn and I don't really think I can wear an iron weight color work sweater in these colors. So as much as I like all the colors possible, this is a little too cool of a palette for me. Uh, I'm all about the fall colors and pink. <laughs> so um, I love the yarn. I love the rustic wool. Um, but I don't want a garment in it and I don't have enough of any one color to make one item. I would have to stripe it or something and it's just not my color palette to wear on my body. But it will be a beautiful 
stripy crochet throw so i'm thinking of casting on the granny stripe blanket crochet blanket by attic 24 everybody talks about it everybody has one on the go it's a very very popular um simple stripy project for all your scraps or if you have dedicated yarn for it or whatever so i'm thinking that's what i'm gonna do with this yarn i know rustic wool is not the best to make blankets out of for the maintenance purpose um because you can't really wash it and all of that but uh, as much as i know that i would really like a nice wool blanket and i don't think wool needs to be washed all that much all i have to do is soak it and i've already told you how i dry my garments and my nets i spin it to get rid of the water and then i let it dry on a drying rack so i think i can manage it just fine um and i'm going to do it i'm going to make a very rustic blanket and if it felts, it felts. It makes the blanket warmer and that's that's perfectly fine. I mean, it's a blanket. It's supposed to be warm. So if it felts, it's not the end of the world. So that is another project I will be casting on at some point. I, can, I do not promise when. <laughs> Just because of, you know, everything that I'm knitting and working on. But this is on my mind, like, quite... It's, it's my hands are itching, my brain is constantly thinking about it. It's going to happen. I'm going to cast this on soon. Uh, I know I have like one, one, one skein of each color and all of that, but I'm thinking because it's rustic wool, I should be able to spit splice. But I'm going to make the stripes be random. I don't want to do like color blocks. I don't want to just crochet the whole thing and then start the next one. I think if I do stripes in one color, that might be much nicer to look at. I don't know. I'm saying all this. Who knows what I'll end up doing. But in the spirit of the blanket make along, here is my crochet project. <laughs> I have all the yarn sitting here. It's a lot more than I was showing. Um, I don't know if I'll have enough actually for a whole throw. I'll see. I'll figure it out. I can add other colors. I can add scraps and make it um, something totally unique so we'll figure it out as we um, as we go so yeah so that was i think everything about the blanket make along except i have another thing i would like to have a space where everyone can so the the make along will be hosted on instagram of course i've already given you the hashtags but i would like to host it on another platform where we can have some chat and discussion about it. So I was thinking Slack because Ravelry has um, um, accessibility issues. So I don't know how many of you are comfortable with Slack or would you actually prefer a Ravelry? Um, would you actually prefer Ravelry as a platform for it? Uh, please let me know in the comments and I will um, see how many people are interested in all of that. I really don't want to use Ravelry because of the accessibility and um, I have already kind of created a Slack platform for uh, like a group or something. So all you have to literally do is click the link uh, that I'm going to share get on this get on slack if you've not used slack before if you've used it before perfect like it's another channel that you can um talk in but the reason i'm kind of hesitant about slack is just because it adds another platform that you have to go check and have discussions on so i'm not really sure about that let me know what you think um it's definitely being hosted on Rav on instagram i I don't have a Facebook account, so I can't really host it on Facebook. I really don't want to make a Facebook account. Don't ask me to do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let me know. Slack or Ravelry, um, whatever you prefer. Uh, I think I've covered everything about that. Oh, yes. So the giveaway. Oh, yes, there was going to be a giveaway this episode. See, I keep forgetting these things. <laughs> Uh, it's kind of nice that the giveaway is at the end so all you true watchers <laughs> uh, will uh, definitely 
uh, be in the running to win the giveaway. So um, my last giveaway was I think when I hit 1000 subscribers and I know right now my numbers are 2600, 2700 or something which is completely amazing. Uh, thank you so much. But it's not really like a milestone whatever but we make up our own milestones. So I'm declaring today is my milestone subscriber count. <laughs> <laughs> so I um, last time I had a yarn and a project bag that I was giving away and I had to ship this and I shipped it to Canada and while I really love doing that um, shipping overseas is always a little um, you end up spending more money on the shipping um, than you intend to either it's the shipping or it's like the um, customs and all of that and I would rather we spend that money on yarn itself. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick three um, names. The first person is going to get a pattern um, which has been very graciously donated by Hannah who is Yarnia Designs on Instagram. Um, she has... I think she's Yarnia Designs on Instagram and on Ravelry. Hannah has some amazing patterns you should go check out. Um, she also has a podcast on YouTube called The Tales of Yarnia. So uh, Hannah had reached out to me. It's been a while. I think in January sometime she reached out that she would like to donate one of her beautiful patterns which is the Starlight Cowl pattern. She wanted to gift me one and she wanted to give one to the viewers and and so uh, it, it's such a gracious um, gift especially I know how much effort designers um, have to you know um, they, they, they make their designs and they put so much effort into it so thank you so much Hannah for um, donating one pattern to the um, viewers of my podcast that's amazing so one of you the first one will the first winner I pick will get Hannah's starlight cowl pattern and another pattern from your Ravelry um, queue or something you a design that you've been meaning to purchase but you haven't yet I'm gonna contact you you will let me know and I will gift you that pattern <laughs> and the other two will also get um, the other two winners that I pick will also get uh, one of the patterns that they would like to purchase on Ravelry. So I'm going to pick three people. The first one will get two patterns, one from Hannah, one from the Ravelry uh, favorites. That's the word. And the other two winners will also get a pattern from their Ravelry favorites. So uh, I don't have a prompt per se. I guess you can... Um, Okay, tell me what is um, the project that you're currently working on. You can leave the comment in the in the um, comment section of this video, and I'm gonna pick the winner pretty quickly. I think by my next episode, I will have picked the winner. So you have about two weeks from um, the day that this uh, video is going out, um, and let me know which what project are you working on. I would love to know that. It's always so. Uh, it's so much fun to fi find out what everyone's working on and that actually adds to my queue on Ravelry. It just increases the knitting queue um, exponentially. <laughs> and that's, I love that. <laughs> so um, that is the um, small but fun giveaway that I'm hosting today. Uh, I will have another giveaway in my next episode. There is something really fun coming up in the next episode. So definitely watch this space. But I'll talk about it all um, when we meet again in a couple of weeks. So I think that is everything I had for today. I know I spoke a lot. I have to see how long this episode has become. <laughs> Um, but thank you so much for watching if you have stuck with me till the end I really appreciate it I really enjoy coming and talking to all of you and then um, interacting with you once the video goes live and everything it's so much fun to do that uh, thank you so much for uh, leaving such beautiful comments on my episodes and I really enjoy 
responding to the comments. I think I have some backlog going on right now because I haven't finished responding to all the comments that were posted on my previous video, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of it soon. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Um, stay safe, take care, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Happy crafting. Bye.